Hi, today is June 11th, 2011, and my name is James Leone, and I'm doing a follow-up on the Eps Perfection V200 photo scanner, which is right there. Hopefully I got it on camera here. Yes. Okay. Now, I've since I um, did my video on the Epson Perfection V200 and, and a bunch of Channel 4, I've upgraded twice, and I've even I've even started with a different installation. So I I had I was doing some scanning today, and I just you know needed one document to scan because both the copiers wouldn't pick up everything on there, and I just wanted to get a full copy of the document. And so I used my scanner here and it fit in there perfectly, or at least tried to, and so I went to go through the procedure and I made one mistake that if had I not done that, I would have had quick and easy success. So um, the good news is, is that uh, the procedure for getting this, uh, to, for getting the Epson Perfection to work in Ubuntu 1104 has not change since Ubuntu 1004 came out when I did my last presentation. Um, I'm going to go over mis some mistakes that I made earlier today, um, but I'm going to start out with the first part of the presentation, which will be fairly short, is just going to be me basically um, seeing what packages you need to install to get this to work. Now um, I already have the scene. I already have Sane installed, and I think a bunch of may even come with Sane installed. I'm not sure. I don't know what version of it of it is, but all you have to do, the short of it is, all you have to do is go to the Avasys Corporation uh, download page for the um, Epson Perfection and download three packages. One is called iScan, one is called iScan Data, and for the Epson Perfection 200 you have to have um, the iScan, iScan plugin GTF670. Also, or your scanner won't work. And then um, in the second part of the presentation I'll go into various things, uh, nuances of difficulties that can take place just due to the fact that you haven't followed the simple instructions like I did earlier t today. I made the mistake of not downloading the iScan plugin and I misread the GT there as a QT and I thought I didn't need it because I didn't have KDE on this installation of Ubuntu and I was wrong. So um, I actually did need that package and once I installed it, it worked without any tweaking whatsoever. But before I did that, I did a lot of tweaking, and so I'll get into details of the different confusions that can take place, and also um, the effects that old solutions that are written out there on the internet that used to work, that don't work now, may have, how they may affect people today um, negatively. Okay, so I'll start out. Uh, basically, if you have this Epson Perfection, uh, what you want to do is you want to search for the terms Epson, Linux, and Avasys, A-V-A-S-Y-S, right there. The first Google result that will come up is Linux Driver, Avasys Corporation. You click on it, go down to the bottom, and you select Scanner. And you're going to see question, you know, which one do you got? You just say perfection for photo. Say your distribution is. Mine is 1.2. It is 1104. And I'm from the USA. And that last part doesn't matter. I'm just an individual anyway. Okay. So now uh, this this procedure may work perfectly well for other models of Epson's. I, I don't know because I don't have them. But I would imagine they would. Some of these other models may or may not need um, the GT plugin that I was talking about. I don't know. So, you know, keep that in mind, I guess, based on what model that you've picked. 
it'll tell you in general what you need to download, but it still could look kind of confusing. And actually, I got, I got confused this morning just because of all the different... I was impatient for one, and all the different things that were that are here could lead to that. There are basically three packages you need to install for the Epson Perfection V200. One is, is just basically the iScan data package. The other one is called just the iScan package. And the third one is the iScan plugin GTF670. Now, um, also, if you look at this, um, you have to know whether you're using a Debian based distribution or not. Um, in this case, I am because I'm in Ubuntu. And, you know, if the video is most exactly for people that use Ubuntu, but it could be for other distributions as well, but I can't certify because I'm not doing it right now. <laughs> I know that this works in 1104 and with that model right there. Okay, so two, a couple things you need to know. You need to know, do I have an RPM-based distribution? Do I have a Debian-based distribution? Or do I need to download the source to compile it? I'm not going to get into that. Um, but basically, what that consists of, well, let's get into it a little bit, is you download it, you unzip the file, Targa zip is a zip file. So in most distributions with a graphical user interface, you can right click on the file and say extract here, and you'll find the directory there. Then you're going to go in the terminal, change directories into there, type dot slash configure, and then make. And if both those things work without any errors, and you make install, and then it'll be installed. Okay, but this is an either-or choice. Either you're using an RPM-based distribution, which would be SUSE, Fedora, Mandrake, or you're using a Debian-based distribution, which is Debian, Ubuntu, Mint, etc., etc., or Slack, where would be a source file <laughs> in this case. Okay, so you're going to get three of them. In my situation, i got the iScan data deb package right here. Then I got the Debian 32-bit. This one differentiates between 32 and 64. My installation is a 32-bit installation, so I down, downloaded the 32-bit packages. And I got the versions for Ubuntu 8.10 or later. So I got the iScan um, package and the iScan plugin GTF670 from right here downloaded those and uh, when I downloaded it from Firefox it asked me if I wanted to save it or open it with the Ubuntu Software Center I went ahead and opened it up with the Ubuntu Software Center supplied my password and installed it and everything was fine after you install all three packages um, you can go up to applications and then graphics and you will see uh, you know, an item called image scanner for Linux if you click on that what will end up coming up is graphical in user interface that looks like this. This is my test um, <laughs> case right here. I guess I could do it again. Just, you know, once you do a preview, your scanner starts making noises, and there's your result. Okay, but that's a preview if you want to actually scan it for saving, even though it isn't really clear there. You scan, you name what file it is that you want, what do you want to call the thing, what type of file do you want it to be, do you want a PDF, do you want it to be a JPEG, PNM, I don't know what that is, but I guess I'll pick PDF because that's my thing, and I press OK, and then once this dialog box is done doing its thing, you'll have in your home directory a file saved with the contents there. Sorted by date, so the last one there will be default. Well, oh, well, I can't play myself for God's sakes. No good. Um, am I still going? Okay, well, there it is. There's my PDF scan. Yes, okay, I guess I'm still going. <laughs> okay, so you got all three of those, you're done. Okay, that that's it. Now I'm going to get into the things for. <coughs> I guess a criticism that really we can't do much about, but I'm just I'm just going to lay it out is just these are barriers to to desktop use. It's just the fact that there is actually confusion out there. And one barrier to desktop use is kind of 
it isn't kind of, but it is um, the fact that there is old documentation out there, and sometimes people make mistakes, or they're you know, like I did earlier today. So um, anyway, uh, if you just want to get your scanner working, you're not interested in all this other stuff I'm going to talk about, which is basically criticism. I don't know how constructive it can be, but it will be. Uh, you can stop here. Okay, so for everybody that's everybody that stayed here, um, basically what had happened in my situation is I forgot to install the iScan plugin GT, and there was I thought for whatever reason I thought that said QT, <laughs> and first thing I thought was KDE, and since I'm not running KDE here, I thought I didn't need it. Well, you do need it for the Epson Perfection V200. And so I ended up trying to figure out what was going on because what happened is I'd start the the scanner, and I guess I'll, I'll back up and I'll say that um, what really should happen uh, in 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 the situation that I was in that I had not installed this required last plugin, it really should have detected with LSUSB the fact that I was using an Epson Perfection V200 and and told and gave me a warning message back that said you you have to install the iScan plugin GT which required for your package click here to download and install it but it didn't all it did it says that it can't communicate with the, um, with the scan can't send a signal or send a, can't send a communication to the Scanner. I guess I could look up the exact error was what it was. Um, could not send command to scanner, and then um, it just sat there. And then you click OK, and then you're done. I was sitting scratching my head, wondering, and I thought that something had changed between ten, ten o four and eleven o four. And here we go again. Well, that's not the case. You know, we know what happened. So I, I looked up, um, I did a search, for, you know, based upon this error. And uh, one result was the Ubuntu form, and another result was a conversation that was taking place in the Fedora form that was a little newer than the Ubuntu form's last post. So I went to the Fedora form, see if I can get some <laughs> more, you know, up-to-date information but the real thing is is that um, you know I'm a little worried when the, the latest result is 2007 discussing the problem that I'm having at, the, at that time so um, I took a look at this first and this guy you can tell this guy is experienced because um, he's just got all sorts of details and one detail that he had in here is that he said that he looked at the proc bus USB and devices directory and was able to find you know the vendor ID of his of his you know of his of his camera. Um, well, that I don't have a on my system you know on Ubuntu eleven oh four that it doesn't have you know proc bus USB devices. Instead, it has a dev dev subdirectory and I looked for you know the newest post here and some other guy was talking about going to um, I'm not quite sure I think oh, oh tree, they, they were I'm just going off memory um, going to dev USB and then bus and then scanner zero. And I, I didn't see anything like that. I saw a dev. In fact, there was no USB subdirectory in my dev directory here. And where um, for the camera, I could uh, dev video zero is clear cut. Okay. And where dev audio zero used to be clear cut, it's now <laughs> HW zero comma one. Um, in this case, I just thought, well, maybe I should just look in the bus directory, and yes, okay, now there's USB. At this point, I didn't know what to do, and so I decided to run the lsusb command here. And 
don't even know if that's going to even be clear coming out, but um, it, it basically says that on bus 2, device 15, there, it's associated with a Seiko Epson Corp, and this, okay, that's an Epson, and it's got an ID of 04BA colon 012E. I'm thinking, okay, um, well, perhaps, like, if I look at this 002 directory here, yeah, oh, there's the 15, so this little device here must represent my scanner, that little file there. That, that must be the device file, okay. So I identified that, and then I, and then I went to the uh, result from the Ubuntu forum, and the guy started talking about um, how he had downloaded the source for iScan, compiled it himself, housed it somewhere, which really, right now, isn't necessary. And then he talked about editing two files in the etc. scene.d subdirectory. I don't even know if I'm getting that clearly. One was called snap scan. And the other one it was not epson.com. It was not epson2.com, but was epcoa. What the hell does epcoa have to do with this? Okay. Now, um, <coughs> I also saw somewhere in the thread that, right, I, I just, I, I just started to poke around and I thought, well, you know, maybe I could look and maybe somewhere in user local, um, I'll see something about iScan. or user share, I'll see iScan, and so I went to user share and poked around and I saw, okay, well here is um, here is an iScan subdirectory. In fact, in, I, before I installed that other um, package, it didn't exist. The only thing that existed was the iScan data package, and in there there was a device folder which is a bunch of XML, what you double click on is going to read much of anything unless you right click on it and you open it up with something besides Firefox. I can't stand how these systems want to open up XML with Firefox. Then I saw EPCOA. What the hell? <laughs> What's going on here? Well, okay, well maybe I thought to myself, well, perhaps um, the configuration file snap scan or, or Epson or you know needs to have a name change somewhere in there or that um, <coughs> I had to use the EPCOA configuration file instead of Epson and this kind of rang true because the guy in that other thread was talking about editing an EPCOA.com file I thought, what the hell Right? Okay, so you just if you just look at the contents of this, first of all, this snapscan.conf, and, it, and I'll tell you, it is, it's completely unclear as to what it's supposed to do or what it's supposed to configure by, its, by the name snapscan. It has something to do with, with saying. I don't know if snapscan is a certain brand. It looks like that Acer maybe makes a, a snapscan but there were entries for Epson Perfections, excluding this V200 that I added, I ended up commenting out, um, you know, for an Epson Perfection 600, 1639, 2400, 3490, and 1500, with entries that look very, very similar to the product ID that I had up here, 048B0112E, 0 times 04B8. Okay, and so I tried in, well, mine must be 0 times 04B8, 0 times 012E, and then I tried that, see if it works, and nothing. Okay, well, let me try, let me try editing this Epson.com, and I put pretty much the same thing in, and then it also has entries that are commented out that come with it 
for dev USB scanner zero or dev USB slash scanner zero. Well, I know I don't have any of those. I know it doesn't apply, but I thought, well, back of my head, I was thinking, well, maybe I have to uncommon that to make Linux create a dev USB scanner zero, kind of like you devs. Well, not too clear. Um, I did never ended up uncommenting that, I did end up putting the USB 0x04B8 zero, zero zero space 0x0112E, zero zero e. ended up commenting it out when that didn't work, and I thought, well, maybe something's going wrong because there are two Epsons, one's an Epson, one's an Epson 2, well, maybe I should add to this, then and that didn't work, and I thought, well, maybe I should just have it in this one and not that one. And maybe just that one and not this one, or maybe just in snap scan, but not this one and not that one, maybe all three, or maybe just this one, or maybe just snap scan. And, you know, <laughs> the, 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 the number of possibilities increases, or maybe it's Epcoa and snap scan, or Epcoa and Epson 2, or Epcoa and Epson 1, or, Ep, Ep, or, you know. At the end of the day, it was none of these. I didn't even do nothing. Then I noticed in the user share there was a USB file, and I looked at the contents of it. And when I looked at the contents of it, I noticed that it had a bunch of these different product ID numbers, but I noticed mine was missing. And at one point, so I added my 0 times 04B, 0 times 0112E down there. And at one point, when I had the um, EPCOA entry not commented out, and I think this uh, iScan data USB may have been calmed out, may not have, and the snap scan I may have at the top. Um, yeah, I can't even remember what exact various parameters were, but I had an entry here for dev bus USB 0208 bus equals USB. I mean, who the hell knows whether I needed to have the last anything past O2 there because it specifies bus equals USB, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know, that, that's completely, absolutely unclear, but, and then it mentions something about you have to have <coughs> firmware, and I know what that is. There are certain printers out there that you actually, uh, a piece of software actually has to be sent to the printer before the printer will be active to accept print jobs. It's made by the manufacturer and there's certain, um, I, I have an HP 1200 that requires that, and I, I've gone through that procedure. I've, you know, I've had that figured out once. There's a very good, um, I forgot the name of, <laughs> of the, the dryer. I think it's Zmod or something. There, it's got Z in there. Anyway, um, so I know that it's possible that, you know, to have a, a very tiny piece of firmware download resting somewhere to be concatenated literally over to the device to be ready to print at some point. So, um, I thought, well, maybe that's it. So I poked around in the user share snap scan and you're, you know, for some kind of, um, firmware file. And I'm going to look now just to see if it's changed since I've put in, um, that last package, but I'll tell you right now, no. Um, I mean, use your share, there isn't that. If I look in device, I just got a bunch of XML files, and there's a description file, and a oh yeah, and there's also a blacklist file to confuse things. So I looked in the blacklist file, see, well, maybe my perfection's been blacklisted by some prick, you know? <laughs> so, anyway, um, so after all the, you could see how many things can go wrong, and basically, both those people, I bet you the time they made their interviews were good, competent people that knew what the hell they were doing at the time, but now none of that shit applies, and if someone is, just happens to be careless and doesn't install a dev file, you know, from, from, uh, from the vendor's, you know, the, you know, the vendor's driver, because they got it in three packages. God knows why the fuck they have it in three packages. Put them in one package. Just put it in one goddamn... But why? Why three? But, um... 
<clears throat> maybe because some need parts and some don't. Some scanners, yeah, I, I don't know. But really, honestly, they really ought to put all three of those together. Um, in any case, um, you can see the kind of confusions. I, I was wrestling with this for for a good half an hour. You can see there's there are five variables here, and also these little entries in here aren't exactly the same as what you got there in the product ID and you know at one point I was careless and I had put in the word USB on the left twice uh, another point another time I had copied the the output from LS USB and actually put in 04b8 colon 0112e instead of 0 times 04b8 Space zero times zero one twelve e, and uh, you know, in the, the day it didn't make a difference, but um, you know, and, and you know, and the the thing was you need to have that last package installed. So, um, <coughs> but when people go doing their Google searches and they find those results, guess what they're going to do? They're going to try all this stuff. Maybe if they're adventuresome. Um, most people would probably just stop and so I think that the, the first mistake that happened in this situation you know I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be not just because it's me but in general we should be very forgiving towards the end user uh, and know the end, the end user is going to make mistakes so try to make it least, the least complicated as possible number one the mistake that was made that causes some kind of usability problem to the end user is that well the very first thing is that these drivers are not available in the Ubuntu software center as far as I know that's number one number two is that the you have to you actually have to find you know Google exists so that's good for us but um, if you do the if you don't search for the right exact word, you're not going to find the website with the drivers over there immediately. Um, you may be able to go to the Epson page, and I think the Epson page may direct the user back over to the Vasis page. So I wouldn't say that, that that's too bad, you know. But you probably should be in the same place, honestly. But um, the second mistake that will actually count as a mistake is that to get this thing working you need to install three packages and that's just for Ubuntu now if we're talking about another distribution that doesn't come with SANE installed and I think Ubuntu comes with SANE installed then it may or may not tell you when you try to install this thing that you know uh, iScan requires SANE the package SANE and whatever package is seen depends upon, for God's sakes. So, but anyway, um, the the second mistake is that these things aren't just all in one one package. Um, now, and that is for the distribution. So, if um, <coughs> to my mind there would be one package just for eleven oh four that would know that seen doesn't is already there or would check to see if scene was there and maybe do an app get and get it to download in the background the different packages that are, that, that are required from the, Mos the Vasis web page um, then the last the last mistake is the fact that the way this is done has has has, has changed so the old instructions cause the careless, careless user, which includes me, additional problems, and then also can cause the very inquisitive and over-academic uh, user problems as well, because if you look at the contents of etc. scene D snap scan, you're going to see there are a lot of products here that have USB and they have a device number there, and that almost implies that um, you have to have these entries in there for the devices to work otherwise they wouldn't be there well 
that was exactly that was exactly not the case in my situation. It didn't need the entry. As you can see here, I got this comment commented out for the Epson Perfection V200. But I added it because of the implication of the contents of this. The second thing was um, pretty much the, the the configuration file here is not very descript. There is a divergence between EPCOA and Epson, which should not happen at all. And finally, last but not least, um, when I looked at the contents of the user share iSkin data EPCOA description file, one of one of the descriptions in there was actually for the um, Epson Perfection V200, and it said that a certain piece of software was required to get the thing to run, and point and points the user to the to the URL that I'd gone to where I downloaded those three files. But it wasn't very clear exactly as to what. Or maybe it did. No, yeah, it did. It did say it needed the plugin GT. But why the fuck is that in an EPCOA, EPKOWA file? For God's sakes, I, 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 it boggles the mind as to why. But anyway, that's that's what went wrong, and that's how these things happen, or why why these things end up being th this way. I don't know, but um, <coughs> it would be nice that if that you know some you can actually say that it doesn't matter what brand of hardware you use you can figure it this way <laughs> these are the prerequisites for whatever whatever it is you're using and and I don't what I don't mean by that is don't make it over complicated for everybody just to 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 to, to suit fit the most complicated case. I'm saying simplify the most complicated case. So in my I, I I really don't see any reason to have any entries in etc saying D with USB entry. It isn't here for my device. It's not an it's commented in EPCOA. It's commented it out in Epson 2 and Epson. There shouldn't be two Epsons. And um I, I'm absolutely boggled as to why the user share iScan data folder would would have entries for Epson devices that are up to zero times one, zero one two C compared to my E, and why my E would not need it. And you know, I don't know who I should feel these complaints to, but perhaps they should have in there other, it gets too tedious for the developers to have to put in a device manufacturer number for all these different devices, they're, they're, they're not going to get them on all, get them all, and some people are going to, are actually, not. it's not going to work because they don't have the entry. <coughs> now I noticed when, when I did an, add entries for these, when things weren't working, I would get more than it would. It would get past the point where it would say I can't communicate with the scanner. It would ask me if I wanted to use the the Epson EPCOA. And at one point, I had three different selections. And the first time it worked is when it, is was actually when it went through the EPCOA. So for each one of these configuration files, in, insane, it'll make another entry on this iScan program, and you'll have two, three choices as to which one you want to use, but it won't actually work until you have that third product in there. It'll be like an intermediary fail. Okay, I'm going to stop here. And um, Configuration files are good. I think some of the some of the flux that's taken place um, and the change of the way things work to get it more automatic can cause some pain and some time loss for, for some people. And it's really hard to know 
when you're using peripheral devices, if you haven't used before, whether you need to do this kind of thing or not. And I'm not saying go make another wiki, you know wiki page with extra documentation. I'm I'm more so in favor of having um, have things be really self-explanatory and documentation not needed. And if it's the case that <coughs> Sane doesn't need these these samples anymore, uh, these sample entries anymore, they they don't apply. Then God, for God's sakes, take them out. Um, and that way, at least you won't confuse the user. Um, I haven't tried to remove these configuration files, you know, to see whether it would still work or not. Um, try to figure out what it, act, what it actually needs for my situation. But um, I guess it's a really tough catch-22 until such time that every single one of them works the way this Epson Perfection V200 works. Um, it's probably is the best practice to have it in a state which everything will just work out of the box. It's just, you know, if you get to the point where you get confused, then, you know, that, that's, that's it. So I'm going to stop and then I'm going to do another small presentation.